Happy to be joined by uh, John Chaka, the uh, general manager of the Arizona Coyotes, as he finds himself, uh, well, all of us uh, in the midst of COVID-19 and in and around the Phoenix area. Uh, John, uh, first of all, thanks for joining me. And secondly, uh, when we speak to people, we kind of wonder what COVID-19 looks like in their area. Is your area similar to so many others, uh, very quiet or, or a bit different from that standpoint? Yeah, thanks for having me. It's, uh, you know, it's been interesting here in Arizona. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, we've been hit just like everybody else. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's scary. Um, you know, a lot of new, new situations that we haven't really encountered, but uh, yeah, people have been really good. I, you know, I haven't seen many people out. The, the weather's beautiful. I think that's helpful. People can go in their backyard or they can go out for a walk if they're being safe and staying, you know, socially distanced. But um, you know, it's been good that way, but, but at the same time, it, it's been quiet. People have been taking it seriously, you know, as they should, and that, that's been a positive to see. John, you and the uh, Coyotes have been sort of on the leading edge when it comes to uh, doing what you can to help out. And I'm going to, three different angles on this. First, I'm going to talk about you and your wife, Catherine. You own a number of Wendy's in the southern Ontario area, and you went about uh, donating a thousand meals uh, to frontline workers. Uh, what was kind of the decision-making process on you and your wife wanting to help out like that? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of frontline workers out there who's inspired by them, their bravery and selflessness. And they're really the, you know, the ones that are fighting this battle for us right now. So, um, you know, food's a basic uh, staple. You know, it's, it's something that that's very simple, but it's important to people in their lives this time. So, uh, you know, felt like if we could just help people with the necessity of food and Buy them with a good meal, uh, you know, keep them going. And when they're working these crazy shifts and dealing with everything that they are in society, we thought it would be a, a good gesture. And we've been just uh, overwhelmed with the, uh, the feedback and how appreciative they are and how much it means to them. So, uh, you know, we started off with a thousand meals in April and, um, you know, we're going to blow by that uh, just, just because of the demand and the amount of people that, that, that you know, we're helping. And uh, that means a lot to us. Well, speaking of uh, food, uh, you and the governor, uh, Doug Ducey of Arizona, uh, were at a food bank. And I mean, uh, what's it like to sort of, you know, be in the, in, in the trenches, for lack of a better term, when it comes to seeing the people that need the help during uh, COVID-19? Yeah, the well, governor's a smart guy out here, a really interesting guy. I got a chance to see his leadership uh, firsthand a few times now. And, and you know, when, when uh, this was starting, uh, these, these food banks were getting hit pretty hard. There's not a lot of people that were willing to fall their time. It's a tough thing to do and uh, to go out and help and stay safe, but also help out your, uh, your fellow neighbor. And uh, so, yeah, we called to go work with him and, and help out uh, the food bank. It was good, but not tough meals in a very short amount of time. He was, he was, he was getting the pictures and I was in the back, uh, you know, un unloading the boxes and uh, I got a good workout in at the same time. So it was fun. And uh, one more regarding, uh, you know, direct impact that you're making on COVID-19. Uh, 19, you have you and uh, Aaron Cohen, the CEO of the Coyotes, have donated 20% uh, of your salaries. They're taking a 20% salary reduction. Uh, not always easy to do. What made you decide to, to go that avenue as well? It, you know, same kind of story. It's just, uh, you know, fortunate to be in a situation where, uh, you know, we do have enough to, to help others and so you know just the opportunity to make that donation was was uh was crucial for us and, and Aaron you know came up with the idea and uh you know he brought it to me I thought it was a great idea I want to participate want to help out uh, any way I could so I thought it made a lot of sense and, and happy to do so all right when you're not helping out with COVID-19 you're helping out the uh, Arizona Coyotes so what does the GM of a National Hockey League team do uh when uh, the season has been put on pause yeah, it's been busy. Uh, you know, the nice part is it's, you know, you're not driving to the rink or you're not flying from city to city. So in that, in that sense, you save some time to do some other things and in these initiatives we've done. But, but the actual hockey side, it's, 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 you know, you still have a draft to prepare for. You still have free agency. Um, you still have, you know, potentially some contracts you're dealing with. But, but mainly, you know, the bulk of the work has been uh, just, you know, communicating with our people and making sure that they're up to date. And like I said, there's a lot of anxiety, fear, those types of uh, emotions going around. And uh, I just found as a leader to, to communicate with people. Not that I have any answers. Um, you know, there's still a lot to be uh, determined and a lot of information that needs to be uh, accrued in order to make these decisions. But, uh, but, you know, I felt like just getting on the line, hearing people's questions, you know, letting them re reassuring them that no one knows right now, but we're all working through this together. Yeah, I think that's gone a long way. And, 
and like I said, though, but, but make sure that people are, you know, still productive because there are some things that need, life, life needs to go on and we got to keep working, but, but obviously in a safe uh, and sustainable way. John, I had to kind of refresh myself with the NHL standings. It's been a while since I looked at them. And from what I see, the Coyotes are close, right? You're four points out of a, a wild card spot from what I could gather. So, you know, so many discussions on the return. Will they go straight to playoffs? Will it be a tournament format? Uh, you know, percentage to get in. I mean, what do you what do you think with your team, you know, so close but not quite in when the NHL went for a break and a pause? Yeah, I mean, you know, for our team, we're, we're a team that we're trying to get over the hump. You know, we're, uh, we're trying to get into a playoff spot and, uh, you know, take that next step as an organization. And got off to a good start and, uh, you know, ran into some adversity. But that, you know, that's all part of growing and building as an organization. So, so we were, you know, we were in a, a thick of a race and, and uh, we felt like we were playing some good hockey. We lost one goal game. But, you know, when the season was paused, we were going in to play uh, at home. We got eight, eight of our final 12 games at home. Uh, we were playing Vancouver. Felt like, you know, if we could go in and win that game, we were playing hockey in a good position. But, you know, as it relates to, you know, the league's plans moving forward, I think, you know, a lot of that's going to be determined upon, you know, how this works out from a health and, and safety perspective. And um, at the end of the day, the league will have to make some decisions about what a return looks like. And, you know, what's fair for the, you know, the, the greater whole, um, you know, obviously not just the Coyotes. And uh, we understand that. And the league's always been good at, you know, this is a complex situation and, and taking in all the information and coming up with a really, you know, pragmatic solution that, like I said, I think, you know, the game as a whole uh, needs to recover and we got to get to a good place. And I think Gary and Bill are, are the right people to lead us there. John, do you uh, keep in touch with the players who do you leave that to Rick talk? What's the role of a GM uh, with the players when everyone's just kind of waiting to hopefully return sometime soon? Yeah, I think it's different for every GM probably. You know, I'm pretty active with our guys for the most part throughout a season and have, have good relationships. So, so I've talked to every player individually probably three times. So, you know, trying to find that balance between talking to them and keeping them, uh, you know, up to date on information or checking in on them. But, you know, obviously there's a, a lot going on right now too. So I want to give them their space, but uh, talking, I had individual calls with guys last week and, just went over, you know, some things here, you know, there's going to be some time before we get back to playing, you know, what are each guy, what, what are these guys doing, you know, whether it's mentally or physically to, to stay sharp and stay connected and, and, uh, you know, we be in a good position when we do come back to play whenever that is. And, uh, you know, I was surprised really, really good discussions. I think it might be a, a function of the time that guys have to sit and reflect. And, you know, usually when you have those types of discussions they're after a season and, and, you know, they're within, a day or two of you, you know, being knocked out or your season ending and they're, they're raw and emotional. And these ones were, uh, you know, very, uh, I thought the guys reflected extremely well and, and were pretty uh, strategic about what they're thinking about doing moving forward. It was, it was refreshing. It was good to hear. John, uh, well, I'm, I'm hoping it's good to hear you uh, take on our rapid fire. Uh, five questions, uh, yeah. nothing too difficult. We'll see if we, uh, we get your brain working a little harder here. This one, well, lots of different options on this. Favorite dessert? <laughs> I'm not much of a dessert guy, but uh, I've actually been dipping in. There's some avocado cream that's pretty good out there now. So some, some good alternatives. I'm dairy free, but uh, it's pretty good. Okay, uh, childhood hero. Oh, Doug Gilmore was a, a big one. Uh, just growing up in southern Ontario, and uh, how good he was. Favorite arena to 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 watch a game in outside of your home arena. And I, I, I'm just amazed by that Detroit arena, you know, the whole, whole thing. It's a great place to watch. It's a beautiful facility, you know, the practice room, um, the lines are incredible. So they, they did an amazing job there and uh, it's, it's tough to beat that arena now. Favorite sports movie? Oh, Rudy. It's a, it's a classic. Inspiring. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And now finally, uh, you, you know, you're successful in hockey, successful in, business outside of hockey, but if you weren't involved in this, uh, what do you think you might be doing? That's a good question, you know, and uh, times when you're thinking through a lot of stuff and quarantine, you know, like what crosses your mind, but yeah, probably something in finance, you know, um, data driven is, is kind of, you know, stuff I enjoy, but uh, I, you know, I just spent a lot of time looking at financial markets and the economy and just trying to understand, you know, what's going to be the fallout of some of these things. and. And, uh, you know, I've always had an interest in it and a background in it. But, 
you know, doing some of this stuff's maybe uh, reinvigorated some of that passion. So uh, that's probably something along those lines. Well, John, we appreciate your time. Uh, you know, good luck to you and uh, the Coyotes if and when the season gets started again. And uh, a big thanks from everyone for all that uh, you and the Coyotes have done when it comes to tackling COVID-19. Yeah, thanks, Gene. Stay safe. You too.